This is AC Service Tech. I've had my own HVACR business for over 11 years. I worked for several heating and cooling companies before that. I teach high school and adult students heating and cooling, and I'm here just to share the knowledge that I've learned over those years. So sit back and I hope you enjoy yourself. This is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the HVACR basic refrigeration cycle training. In this example, we're using a walk in cooler box to go over the refrigeration cycle. Okay, now we're about an inch and a half away from it. We're gonna bring it back to the joint again. And you see that our leak must be right on that last joint. So right here is an up close image with the bubble leak detector. I actually have a couple leaks on this right here on this system where the distributor tubes attach into the evaporator coil at. To start off, our common wire is C right here, our heat wire is W, our cooling wire is Y, our power wire is R, 24 volt power, and our G wire right here, that is for fan. So all of those are wired right into the thermostat, and we just want to make sure that our R voltage comes to the thermostat, connects to say G, okay, right here, we're turning the fan on, and then it comes back to the G terminal on the control board of the furnace. These right here are the, some of the tools that I use for doing duct work, and I'm gonna be going over the frequency in which I use each of these tools here, uh, and I'm gonna be going over their use individually, so what each of these tools are used for. So bad electrical connections, uh, possibly high amperage draw. So what I'm gonna do is before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and test for resistance between here and the ground for the compressor wires. I'm gonna actually disconnect these three compressor wires and check each one against the ground before I go ahead and fix this. So this is out of the sun. It's within a few inches of where you're taking your liquid pressure reading at. And we're gonna go ahead and turn this unit on. So this says R410i and it says indoor TXV subcooling 10 degrees. And we confirm that there is actually a uh, TXV metering device on the inside. Just because this is on the rating plate does not mean that you're going to check the charge in subcooling. It's only if you have a thermostatic expansion valve. We're going to go ahead and check our subcooling, and we see that we are reading about 238 psig, and the actual temperature on the middle of this condenser coil right here is 80 degrees. 80 degrees minus 67 degrees is 13 degrees of subcooling. A natural gas or propane direct ignition gas valve. All right, so this is a 24 volt electrical gas valve that sends the full flow of gas through and it directly ignites the full gas flow. So in order for this to turn on, you have to go through the sequence of operations. So first things first, you end up having to have a call for heat at the thermostat, which means that R and W are touching. And then over here at the control board, the control board sees 24 volts on W and you can read it with your multimeter from W to common. Just got done doing a nitrogen flow and brazing all the joints in, and now we're gonna go ahead and do a nitrogen pressure test. We flowed nitrogen through from this side, through into the uh, evaporator coil, and then out this side right here. Maybe you can see right there the TXV is rusted. See this? It's all rusted, and the top is actually rusted all right here. Okay, so I think that this head has lost some of its refrigerant charge. That's why it's not able to apply pressure downwards in order to open up this refrigerant in order to come through. And if you want to help support these HVACR training videos, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech, where we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content such as articles, videos, and answering questions. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.